Hello and welcome to People's Voice, where true stories touch deep emotions. Today, we delve into, we just found out at least four of my five children are not mine, and wife won't say anything. Come, let's explore these real life stories. Today, we've got one story, but it's a doozy. It's about a guy who found out that at least four of his five kids aren't even his. Let's see how this plays out, shall we? First of all, I'm sorry if this ends up being long and rambly. I am not really in the best state of mind. My world has been turned upside down over the last couple of weeks. I just want to write as much context as possible so I can get the best advice needed. For obvious reasons, I am not yet comfortable talking about this with my friends, parents, or siblings. I met my wife when we were in high school and we married in college. We have five beautiful children together, really, I consider them a total blessing regardless of what I'm about to bring up, and up until a couple of weeks ago, I thought that we had the perfect marriage. We were typical high school sweethearts, we go out together, we never fight, and I feel like I've done everything a loving husband should do. I am saying this not to make myself out as the perfect husband, for example, my work has always meant I work long hours. And maybe I haven't always been there when she needed me, but I want to stress that I've never felt our marriage was in any trouble. And never in a million years would I ever have suspected my wife of being disloyal, she's always done everything she could to support me and take care of our children. Now, my eldest daughter recently had an ancestry test done. And the results of the ancestry test strongly suggested I was not her father. She confided this to me privately, showing me the results, and I could tell she was visibly upset by this. Of course, the first thing I did was reassure her that no matter what, she's my daughter and I'll always love her unconditionally. But secondly, the two of us decided to get an official paternity test since the ancestry tests are not completely reliable. It comes back and I am indeed not her biological father. This news really broke me. I'm ashamed to say, I broke down in tears in front of my daughter. The combination of finding out about my wife's infidelity and how upset I was making my daughter by how I was reacting. I really wish I had kept it in for her sake, but I didn't. Following this, I asked my other children, except my youngest, to come and see me. I wanted to know the extent of my wife's infidelity. If it was a one-off, I could maybe work past it, especially given how long ago it would be. However, I didn't want to tell my youngest that she is still in school, a teenager, and really I didn't think it was appropriate to tell her yet. We tell the other three what has happened. I reassure them that I love them unconditionally and that I'll always be their dad, but that I need to know how long this has been going on. God, I can't begin to explain how touching their reaction was. They didn't care I wasn't their biological father, they were just upset at how heartbroken I was. I feel like the only thing that has kept me going these last couple of weeks is their unwavering support. So, we have paternity tests for each of the three done. Not only are none of them my biological children, but together, four of my children have three different fathers. Which somehow made it worse. It's like, she wasn't just having an ongoing affair, she was having multiple. I can't explain how this makes it worse, but it just does. So. I confront my wife with this, expecting her to confess and beg for forgiveness. She doesn't confess. She doesn't even take it seriously. She says the tests must be flawed. All four? How the hell am I supposed to take that seriously? I keep bringing it up, and she keeps brushing it off, getting progressively more annoyed at me. When I bring it up, she will try and guilt trip me. We've been together since high school. Do you seriously not trust me, etc. But how am I supposed to trust her in the face of such overwhelming evidence? From all the recent advice I've received, my plan of action is to 1. Get second tests, just in case some freak accident has occurred. 2. Confront my wife with all four of my older children present. 3. Tell my youngest of the situation. Ask her if she wants to have a paternity test. It will be entirely her decision. 4. I'm 100% going to get some form of therapy. 
My mental state has really been deteriorating over the last couple of weeks, and I owe it to my kids to hold it together. 5. Depending on whether my wife tells the truth, and what her explanation is, if any, I have not ruled out some form of counseling. But at the moment, I think divorce is inevitable unless she changes her attitude drastically. 6. Contact a lawyer and prepare for divorce, if it comes to that. I guess, I should clarify some things that people have been asking. How did the ancestry results suggest I wasn't her father? My family is entirely Irish. No relatives outside of Ireland other than my immediate family, and I even have the stereotypical red hair. My daughter's ancestry results showed nothing from the British Isles, Western Europe, or Northern Europe. That's what set off alarm bells, but it's by no means conclusive, hence the paternity tests. Which two children share the same father? My two eldest daughters share the same father. How did your wife conceive your children? Our eldest daughter was not planned. All the others were planned. Each time we conceived several months after we started trying. Our first three planned children were both our ideas, while she pressured me into having our youngest. She was in her late thirties and wanted one last child before it was too late, and eventually, I agreed. She was conceived several months after we started trying, too. Are you infertile? I don't know. I've never had a fertility test done. But the fact that none of our planned children are mine makes me think that I might be. I will have a fertility test as soon as possible. Now before we move to the final update, let's dive into what other users are saying about it. User text friend says, OP, I wouldn't worry about trying to save the marriage. If she's still lying to you in the face of overwhelming evidence, then there's nothing left to save. I suggest you talk to a lawyer about how to start the divorce process and follow their advice to the letter. Sit your youngest down and have an age-appropriate conversation with her. Tell her that you and her mother will be getting a divorce, that it turns out that the other kids aren't your biological kids, that you still love them and are still their father, but you won't be able to stay married to their mother. That she can have a DNA test done as well as she wants, but that she doesn't have to. You'll love her, and she'll be your daughter either way. She also doesn't have to decide that right now. Then, take it one step at a time, sort out the logistics of leaving, find yourself a new place, and get yourself set up. From there, I'd start looking at ways to maintain your relationship with all of your children. With the youngest, Make sure you get as much custody as you can, even full custody if that's possible. For all of the children, try to come up with some traditions that everyone could enjoy. Maybe they all come over for dinner at your house once a month. Maybe there's a standing invitation for any of them to come over for Sunday lunch. Maybe you get together every so often and try something new together. Pottery, kayaking, rock climbing, etc. Whatever will work with everyone's schedules. Make sure you keep in touch with each of them individually as well. Ask about how their lives are going, offer to help them with projects they're doing, especially around the home. Be good to them and to yourself, and never badmouth their mother. I don't think you would, from what you've written, but try never to set them up in opposition to her, or that they can't see her or treat her well if they want you to like them. You'll be co-parenting with your soon-to-be ex for the next several years, so make sure that's as easy as possible for everyone concerned. Final. User Veggie Zombie one says, Yeah. Absolutely selfish of her to just bow out without giving anyone, not her husband or kids, a single ounce of closure. She made an absolute mess and left everyone else to pick up the pieces. User Sailor Ground says, You slash need adversa desperate, don't leave the house. Make her leave. In many states, leaving the house can have significant consequences when it comes to deciding ownership. Leaving can be construed as abandoning the marriage, which will work against you since you're a man. From my own divorce experience, when it comes to divorce, do not telegraph your plans or discuss them with your soon-to-be ex-wife beyond what is absolutely necessary, i.e., what your lawyer tells you to do. This will only work against you. She's a liar and doesn't respect you 
and this means that she will treat you terribly in divorce proceedings. Don't give her the upper hand. Now, here's the final update. Tragedy. I have been debating whether or not to post an update because nothing was ever resolved. I decided I would post it here in case anyone is still waiting for one. I apologize for not updating earlier when I promised I would. My kids and I confronted their mother shortly after making that Reddit post. It really didn't go well. I think the prospect that no one believed her finally hit home because she completely broke down and apologized profusely but refused to explain herself or anything that would give myself peace of mind. For the next few weeks, we barely said a word to each other. I was hoping she was thinking it over and I expected her to eventually sit me down and explain herself. I figured she was so far deep in a lie that got out of control, she needed time to think things over. Nope. I came home one evening to find she had taken her own life by overdosing. So, I lost the love of my life and I'll never know what mistakes she had made. I really wish I could go back in time and forget about it all. Whatever mistakes she made, I honestly wanted to work through it, and now I'm just riddled with guilt that I pressed her for an answer. The worst part of this entire ordeal was watching my kids work so hard to keep me together after having lost their mother. Anyway, if you love this story and crave more tales of love, betrayal, and healing, don't forget to subscribe for more from Cheating Stories.